The quadratic formula and operations with complex numbers. The quadratic formula is created by completing the square on the standard form of a quadratic. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So to complete the square on this, we first move the c to the other side. ax squared plus bx equals negative c. Now we make the coefficient of the squared term 1, so we divide everything by a, and we have x squared plus b over ax equals negative c over a. Now comes the part where we create a perfect square. We're going to take the coefficient of x, we're going to take half of it, one half of b over a, is b over 2a. Now we're going to take that b over 2a and square it. That's b squared over 4a squared. And we'll add that to both sides. So we have x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared equals negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. This is a perfect square. may not look like it, but it is. In fact, it's x plus b over 2a quantity squared. This needs a common denominator in order to combine it. The common denominator of 4a squared and a is 4a squared. What I'm going to do is make the denominators the same, and I need to multiply negative c over a by 4a over 4a. So this becomes negative 4ac over 4a squared plus b squared over 4a squared. Now we have x plus b over 2a quantity squared equals, and I'm going to combine this and put it over 4a squared, and I'm going to change the order. I'm going to put b squared first, b squared minus 4ac. Now we're ready to solve. We'll take the square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. x plus b over 2a equals, I'm going to split up the red, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over, I can take the square root of 4, it's 2, I can take the square root of a squared, it's a, and you're almost done, I just need to move the b over 2a to the other side, x would be negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Notice the common denominator. I can combine this into one expression. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is the quadratic formula. A couple things to observe before we try it out. Notice that it must be equal to 0. a is in front of the square, b is in front of the x, and c is the last number. Then all we do is plug it in the expression and work it out. First example, x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. a is in front of the x squared, b is in front of the x, and c is the last number. And the formula is x is the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x would be the opposite of b, that's negative 7, plus or minus b squared. Be aware if it was negative, then you would square it and become positive. 7 squared is 49. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, that's the 1 in front of the square, times c, which is 10, all over, notice the bar goes all the way, including under the negative 7, 
over 2a, 2 times 1. So this is negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 49 minus 40 all over 2, or x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 9 over 2. That's x equals negative 7 plus or minus 3 over 2. And these are all numbers, so it can be simplified. It's negative 7 plus 3 over 2 and negative 7 minus 3 over 2. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. So my answers are 2 and negative 5. Now I want to point out, I would hope when you get a question like this that the first thing you would do is see if it factored. And you'll notice that x squared plus 7x plus 10 does factor. It is x plus 2 times x plus 5. Factors of 10 that add to 7 or 2 and 5. And the answers are what makes 0. That's negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and negative 5 plus 5 is 0. If you can do it this way, of course, do it this way. The quadratic formula is for the messy questions, the ones that don't come out nice. If they factor, factor it. That's the quickest way to solve it. Here's another example, and this one does not come out nice. A is in front of the square, B in front of the X, C that last number. X is the opposite of B, that's 4, plus or minus the square root of B squared. Negative 4 squared is negative 4 times negative 4, that's positive 16 minus 4 times a times c, all over 2 times a, 2 times 3. This is 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. Notice the double negative, 16 minus. And when I multiply these three things, it's going to be negative. So it'll be minus a negative, which is plus. 16 plus 12 over 6. This is x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 6. Look at the square root. Notice that there are perfect squares that divide evenly into 28. In fact, 28 is 4 times 7. And I can take the square to 4. Now that goes out in front of the root. Don't put it out in front of everything there. That's not the way it works. This is x equals 4 plus or minus in front of the root. The square root of 4 is 2. Left underneath the root is 7, all over 6. Now, be aware, if you have addition or subtraction between numbers, there is a way to simplify it. If I had 3x plus 12 divided by 3, be aware that that is 3x divided by 3 plus 12 divided by 3. Both the 3x and the 12 are divided by 3. 3x divided by 3 is x, 1x, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So in this example here, I see that both are divided by 3, and I could simplify it. Now, I don't have that going on up here. I have something similar like this. If I had 4x plus 18 divided by 10, I could split these up like I did up above. However, the thing to observe is that everything is divisible by 2. I can divide each term by 2. This only works if you can divide every term by the common factor. So 4x divided by 2 is 2x. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 10 divided by 2 is 5. This only works if every term has the common factor. And if you look at this, it's exactly this situation. There are two terms above. There's a 4 and a 2 root 7. There's times between the 2 and the root 7. So it's just like 2x. 2x is one term. 2 root 7 is one term. And then there's the 6 below. And all three of these 
have a common factor of 2. So I can divide everything by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 root 7 divided by 2 is 1 root 7, or just root 7. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I divided every term by 2, and this is the simplified answer. 2 plus or minus root 7 all over 3. Last example of the quadratic formula, and this one comes out with imaginary answers, complex number answers. Let's take a look at it. A is in front of the square, B is in front of the X, C is 12. X is the opposite of B, negative 6, plus or minus the square root of B squared, that's 6 squared is 36, minus 4AC. 4 times 1 times 12. All over 2a, 2 times 1. So this is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 48. All over 2. 36 minus 48 is negative 12 negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 all over 2. Negative 12 is negative 1 times 4 times 3. x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 goes out front as a 2. The negative 1 under the square root comes out as an i. Left underneath the root is a 3. And this is all over 2. Now there are two terms above. Negative 6 is a term. 2i root 3 is a term. And below I have a term of 2. All three terms have a common factor of 2. This is like I showed you in the example. You could turn this into negative 6 over 2 plus or minus 2i root 3 over 2 which means it can be simplified to negative 3 plus or minus i root 3. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. It's that part of the quadratic formula that's under the root. The discriminant tells you the number and type of solutions you'll get when you have a quadratic equation. If b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, that means you'll be adding and subtracting a number that's greater than 0. And in that case, you will get two real solutions. If b squared minus 4ac is 0, then that means you'll be taking the square root of 0, and you'll be adding and subtracting 0 to negative b over 2a, which means your answer would be just negative b over 2a. In that case, you get one real solution. If b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, that means you'll be taking the square root of a negative number. And when you take the square root of a negative number, you get two imaginary solutions or two complex solutions. So just looking at this, b squared minus 4ac, tells you a lot about an equation. If my equation was 2x squared minus 4x plus 3, there's my a, my b, and my c, I can just do b squared, that's negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, 2 times c, 3, that is 16 minus 24, and 16 minus 24 is negative 8, so in that case, I have the discriminant less than zero, and that tells me that there'd be two imaginary solutions to that quadratic equation. Recall that i is the square root of negative one. 
if I square both sides, I discover that I squared is negative 1, because when I square a square root, they cancel out. What we're going to look at here is powers of I. Notice that I cubed is I squared times I, which is negative 1 times I, because I squared is negative 1, remember. That's negative I. I to the fourth is I squared squared. Remember, you multiply your powers in this case. 2 times 2 is 4. I squared is negative 1. That's negative 1 squared. And negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. I to the fifth. Now, every odd power I'm going to turn into an even by making it 1 less. That's I to the fourth times I to the first. Your even power, you'll write as a power of I squared. That's I squared squared is I to the fourth, because you multiply your powers, times I, which is negative 1 squared. And negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 times I. And 1 times I is I. I to the sixth is an even, so I'll write that as a power of I squared. It's I squared cubed. That's negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. I to the 7th, make that an even. It's I to the 6th times I. Write the even power as a power of I squared. I squared cubed times I. I squared is negative 1. It's negative 1 cubed times I. And negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 times I is negative I. One more, i to the 8th is i squared to the 4th power, which is negative 1 to the 4th power, which is 1. And you'll probably notice a pattern there. Let's do some random powers. If I ask you to do i to the power of 53rd, simplify that. It's an odd. So I'll make it an even. That's i to the 52nd times i to the 1st. i to the 52nd, I'll turn it into i squared to the 26th power, because 2 times 26 is 52, times i. This is negative 1 to the 26th power times i. Now, as long as your power is even, a negative times a negative times a negative 26 times will make a positive. If it's an odd, like 25th power, then it would be negative 1. But negative 1 26 is 1, and 1 times i is i. If I said i to the 75th power, make it an even. That's i to the 74th times i to the 1st. This is i squared 2 times 37 is 74 times i. Now, i squared is negative 1, negative 1 to the 37th times i. And negative 1 to the 37th power, negative 1 times negative 1, 37 times, is an odd number of negatives, which means there's going to be one negative left over, so it's going to be negative 1 times i, which is negative i. If we say i to the 100th power, that's i squared to the 50th power, 2 times 50 is 100 which is negative 1 to the 50th power, which is positive 1. And one last one, i to the 50th power is i squared to the 25th power, which is negative 1 to the 25th power, which is negative 1. If we get an i in a denominator, we eliminate it just kind of the same way we eliminate a written denominator, rationalize the denominator. We want to get rid of this i, and the way to do that is multiply by i over i. So the numerator becomes, now you have to distribute, 3i plus 2i squared over 4i squared. Remember that i squared is negative 1, so this is 3i plus 2 times negative 1 
over 4 times negative 1, which ends up being 3i minus 2 over negative 4. And that's an okay answer. Typically, you would take the negative off and put it through the top. You have to distribute it if you put it up top, though. So another way to write that is negative 3i plus 2 over 4. And you might see people write an a plus bi form and put the 2 in front. Uh, either way, it's okay. If you get a fraction that looks messy on the bottom, for example, 5 plus 3i over 2 minus 7i, you use the conjugate to rationalize it. What the conjugate does is create a difference of squares. You know, the a squared minus b squared. And when you have a difference of squares like x plus 5 times x minus 5, and you FOIL it out, you get x squared minus 25. The middle drops out. And that's what makes it work here. You're going to make the middle drop out. It will eliminate the i's, and you'll get rid of the i in the denominator. So use the conjugate, take the denominator, and use the conjugate, 2 plus 7i, 2 plus 7i. Now I'm really multiplying by 1. It's not going to change the value of anything. So this ends up being, we're down here, I have to FOIL. So I'm going to take 5 times 2 and 5 times 7i. That's 10 plus 35i. Now I'll take 3i times 2 and 3i times 7i. That's 6i plus 21i squared. All over and down below, I'll foil it out long, but if you understood what I said, the middle's going to drop out. Observe. If I take 2 times 2 and 2 times 7, that's 4 plus 14i. Now I'll take 7, negative 7i times 2 and negative 7i times positive 7i. That's negative 14i, my i looks kind of funny there, minus 49i squared. Now, this stuff here drops out. Positive 14i and negative 14i make 0. Remember what you're going to do is substitute in negative 1 for i squared. So this will end up being 10 plus 41i. And this will be 21 times negative 1, so minus 21 over, this is 4 minus, uh, now i squared is negative 1, negative 1 times 49 is negative 49, so it'll be minus negative 49 or plus 49. So we can simplify this into negative 11 plus 41 i all over 53. Messy, huh? Your problems in WAMAP may ask you to write an a plus bi form. The way you do that is just remember that both of these are divided by 53. So an a plus bi form it would be negative 11 over 53 plus 41i over 53. So if they ask for an a plus bi form, it needs to be like that. But these two are equivalent. They're the same thing. The last thing we're going to mention here is that complex numbers can be graphed in the coordinate plane. The way it works is the x-axis is the real axis. And the y-axis is the imaginary. And this is really 1i, 2i, 3i, 4i, 5i, negative 1i, negative 2i, negative 3i, negative 4i, negative 5i. When you graph 0 plus 2i, remember it's in the form of a plus bi, where a is the real. and the bi is the imaginary. So what we do is we go 0 
on the real axis and then 2i up 2i on the i axis and my point ends up being right there on the imaginary axis. 3 plus 0i, the real part is 3, so I go out 3 on the real axis and up 0i. 3 minus 3i, I go 3 in the real direction and down 3i, here's my point. And the last one, negative 2 plus 2i, negative 2 in the real direction and up positive 2i. And that one's right there. This is exactly like graphing an ordered pair. It's just that all the information you need is in one expression. Remember that the y-axis is the imaginary axis and the x-axis is the real axis. Here are questions from your assignment. So we have a, b, and c. You know the a is 1, b is negative 2, and c is negative 4. And I'll write this for the first problem. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this becomes the opposite of b is positive 2 plus or minus the square root. Now it's negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4 minus 4 times a times c, that's 1 times negative 4, all over 2 times a, 2 times 1. This ends up being 2 plus or minus the square root. Notice the double negative, 4 minus, and then I've got a negative 4 at the end there. It's going to be 4 plus 16. 4 times 1 times negative 4, all over 2, which is 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2. 20 has perfect squares in it. It's 4 times 5. When you take the square root of 4, go down here with it, that goes in front of the root. Don't put it in front of the plus or minus. So the square root of 4 is 2 in front of the root. Left underneath the root is still a 5, and this is all over 2. Now there are two terms up above. There's the 2, and the 2 root 5 is one term. Both of those are divided by 2. Notice that that can be simplified, because both all three terms are divisible by 2. In other words, you could turn this into 2 over 2 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. And these are going to drop out. Don't forget that anything divided by itself is 1. So this is 1 plus or minus 1 root 5 or root 5. And there's my answer. For question 2, A is 9, B is 18, and C is 2. And the quadratic formula is the opposite of B plus or minus B squared. 18 squared is 324 minus 4 times a, that's 9, times c, that's 2, all over 2 times 9. This is negative 18 plus or minus the square root of 324 minus 72 over 18, and I'll go down here with it. This is negative 18 plus or minus the square root of 252, when I subtract those, over 18. Now you need to find the largest perfect square of 252. You can use the factor table, or what I do sometimes is that I start dividing it. I see it's even. Now, 2 is not a perfect square, but see how I do this. All right, I'll say it's 2 times 252 divided by 2 is 126. I see that that's even, so I'll divide it by 2. 126 divided by 2 is 63. 
and 63 is 9 times 7. If you multiply two perfect squares, like 4 times 9, you get 36 a perfect square. Any two perfect squares multiplied make a perfect square. Notice that 2 times 2 makes a perfect square of 4. 4 times 9 makes a per perfect square of 36. And 36 times 7 is 252. So I can rewrite this as negative 18 plus or minus the square root of 36 times 7 over 18, which is negative 18 plus or minus square root of 36 is 6 in front of the root, root 7 over 18. 6 root 7 is a term, negative 18 is a term, and 18 below is a term, and they're all divisible by 6. I'll divide by 6, I get negative 3. Divide by 6, I get 1. Divide by 6, I get 3. So my final answer is negative 3 plus or minus 1 root 7, which is just root 7, all over 3. This equation on question 6 isn't in the right form. It needs to be equal to 0. So this should be 0 equals, I'll move that over there, I'll add it to both sides, 15x squared plus 13x minus 20. There's my a, b, and c. So x is the opposite of b, negative 13, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 169, minus 4 times a, 15, times c, negative 20. Notice the double negative, that's going to be positive. This is over 2 times 15, 2 times a. That's negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 169 plus 1,200 over 30 x equals negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 1,369 over 30. Now this is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to look for perfect squares. I should have just plugged it in and saw if it was a perfect square because in my factor table I see that it's 37 times 37 which means it's a perfect square. This equals negative 13 plus or minus 37 square root of 1369 is 37 over 30 and this is two answers. It's negative 13 plus 37 over 30 and negative 13 minus 37 over 30. This becomes 24 over 30. Both 24 and 30 are divisible by 6, so that's 4 fifths. This one becomes negative 50 over 30. Divide both by 10, that's negative 5 thirds. So my answers are negative 5 thirds and positive 4 fifths. A couple more quadratics and we'll get to the last part of the assignment, which is easier. This is A, B, and C. X equals the opposite of B. The opposite of negative 1 is 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times a times c, at least these numbers are smaller, all over 2 times a, 3. This is 1 plus or minus the square root. We have a double negative again, a minus and a negative. It'll be plus. 4 times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36. 1 plus 36 over 6. Uh, and this looks like it's just going to be 1 plus the square root of 37. I can't do anything with 37. It's prime all over 6. Now, they want you to separate them by commas. I haven't mentioned that so far. That just means you're going to type 1 plus the square root of 37 over 6, comma, 
1 minus the square root of 37 over 6. There's your answers. In question 9, we need to get it equal to 0. 9x squared plus 12x plus 6 equals 0. A, B, and C. X equals the opposite of B, negative 12, plus or minus the square root of B squared. That's 144 minus 4 times 9 times 6. The bar goes all the way under over 2 times 9. This is negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 216. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 times 6 is 216. All over 18. I'll go down here. This is negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 216 is negative 72 over 18. Negative 72 will turn into negative 1 times 36, that's the biggest perfect square, times 2. This is negative 12 plus or minus 6, the square root of 36. Negative 1 comes out as an i root 2 all over 18. Now 6i root 2 is a term, negative 12 is a term, and 18 is a term, and they're all divisible by 6. Divide them all by 6, you get 3, 1, and 2. So this is negative 2 plus or minus i root 2 all over 3. And when you list your answers, you're going to have to list them separated by a comma. So it'll be negative 2 plus i root 2 over 3, and negative 2 minus i root 2 over 3 in the box. Last quadratic, and the rest of these go faster, my a, b, and c x is the opposite of b, that's negative 1, you have a 1 in front, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 1, minus 4 times a2 times c12, all over 2 times 2, 2 times a. This is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 96 over 4, which is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 95 over 4. And we'll go down here with it. So x would be negative 1 plus or minus. I'm going to look for a perfect square in 95. I notice it's divisible by 5. I just do that to see what's left. It's 5 times 19, and both of those are prime, so there's no perfect squares in it. But the negative 1 inside will come out as an i. i root 95 all over 4. And split that up into two answers when you type your question, separated by commas. This is negative 1 plus or minus i root 95 over 4 and negative 1 minus i root 95 all over 4. There are a few questions about the discriminant. That's the part that's under the square root when, of the quadratic, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So the discriminant is that square root part there. And remember that if that part is positive, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, you get two real answers, because you're adding subtracting two real numbers. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, you get one real. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, if it's less than 0, that means you'll be taking the square root of a negative number, 
and you'll be adding and subtracting two imaginaries. So it'll, you'll get two complex or two imaginaries. So my A, B, and C are right there. And I'll do B squared, that's eight squared minus four times A, negative five times C, negative three. This is 64 plus four times five is 20 times three is 60. This is 124, that's greater than zero, which means we'll be taking the square root of a positive number and we'll be adding subtracting a positive number which means there'll be two real answers now irrational numbers are real they are decimals so we have to find the best answer if this was a perfect square then they would be rational this isn't a perfect square so they're going to be irrational numbers there would be two irrational which is this one right here the only way you're going to get two rationals is if that number is a perfect square these go very quick this is negative 60 i squared i squared is negative 1 that's negative 60 times negative 1 which is positive 60. in question 18 you're going to distribute negative 20i plus, actually minus, 15i squared. This will be negative 20i minus 15 times negative 1, which becomes negative 20i plus 15. Uh, that should be acceptable, but a plus bi form would be 15 minus 20i. This is just combining like terms. You're going to take negative 6 minus 2i, and you're going to distribute the minus through the parentheses. These first parentheses don't do anything but group, so you can just drop them. So this will become plus 5 and plus 4i. And then you're going to combine like terms. Negative 6 and 5 make negative 1. Negative 2i and 4i make positive 2i. In this question, you have to FOIL. Don't try to distribute the, the exponents. You can't do that over addition. This is negative 1 plus 6i times negative 1 plus 6i, which you have to FOIL. Take the negative 1 to both. Take the 6i to both. This becomes negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Negative 1 times positive 6i is negative 6i. Positive 6i times negative 1 is negative 6i. And positive 6i times positive 6i is positive 36i squared. This is 1 minus 12i, those are like terms, plus 36 times negative 1, which is 1 minus 12i minus 36. 1 minus 36 is negative 35 minus 12i. This is a question where we eliminate the i in the denominator, just like we eliminate a root in the denominator. And the way you do that is by multiplying by 1. To eliminate the i in the denominator, multiply by i over i, which is 1. Distribute the i up top. You get 1i, or i, minus 4i squared, all over 4i squared. This is i minus... 4 times negative 1 over 4 times negative 1. And we'll go down here with it. i plus 4 over negative 4. And that should be acceptable. Uh, we could switch the top around if we wanted over negative 4. And they want you to write it in a plus bi form. You could take the negative off the bottom and put it through the top, but since we're going to split it up, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be 4 over negative 4 plus 1 fourth i, which ends up being negative 1 plus 1 fourth i.
In this question, you use the conjugate. 5 over 2 plus 3i. To eliminate the i in the denominator, use the conjugate. 2 minus 3i. 2 minus 3i. We're going to multiply by 1. That's not going to change the value. Distribute the 5 in the top. You get 10 minus 15i. Down below, you need to FOIL. Multiply those two out. 2 times 2. 2 times negative 3i. Positive 3i times 2. And positive 3i times negative 3i is negative 9i squared. This is 10 minus 15i over the top middle drops out below, you get 4 minus 9 times negative 1. Notice the double negative below, that'll be 4 plus 9. So this is 10 minus 15i over 13. We're going to write that in a plus bi form, like these. We'll divide them both by 13, and this will be 10 thirteenths minus 15i over 13. Another question with the i in the denominator. Use the conjugate. The conjugate, remember, is the same exact numbers, just a different sign for the imaginary part. Take the denominator and change the imaginary sign. 1 minus 4i is the conjugate. We're multiplying by 1, though, so the fraction will be still the same fraction. It'll just look different. We need to FOIL the top. Take 2 times 1, 2. 2 times negative 4i, negative 8i. Positive 6i times 1, positive 6i. Positive 6i times negative 4i is negative 4i squared. Over. FOIL the bottom. And the middle is going to drop out because you have a difference of squares there. a plus b times a minus b. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative 4i is negative 4i. Positive 4i times 1 is positive 4i. And positive 4i times negative 4i is negative 16i squared. We're going to substitute in negative 1 in our i squareds. So below here, this will be... 2, negative 8i and 6i make negative 2i. And 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So it'll be minus negative 4 or plus 4 over. The middle drops out. I get 1. And this will be 16 times negative 1, but it's minus. It'll end up being a double negative. 1 plus 16. This is 6 minus 2i over 17, and in a plus bi form, this would be equal to 6 seventeenths minus 2i over 17, and that's our answer. Powers of i. i to the 11th will make an even. It'll be i to the 10th times i the first. i to the 10th will be i squared to the fifth power times i. I know that i squared is negative 1, so that's negative 1 to the 5th power times i. Negative 1 to 5th power, since that's an odd power, it'll be negative 1. Negative 1 times i is negative i. i to the 30th is an even, so I can write it as a power of i squared. i squared to the 15th power, which is negative 1 to the 15th power, which is negative 1 i to the 64th is an even, so I can write this as i squared to the 32nd power, which is negative 1 to the 32nd power. That's even. Negative 1 times negative 1, 32 times. That'll make a positive 1. i to the 94th is an even again. It's i squared and half a 94 is 47. So this is negative 1 to the 47th power, which is negative 1. 1394 divided by 2 is 697. 
So this is I squared to the 697th power, which is negative 1 to the 697th power, which is going to be negative 1. Graphing in the complex plane. This is just a really quick question. You're really just graphing ordered pairs. What you have to understand is that the horizontal axis is the real axis. And the vertical axis, the y-axis, is the imaginary axis. So 0 plus 1i means I'm going to go, remember this is a plus bi. A is the real. I'm going to go 0 on the real axis, and I'm going to go up to 1i. And my point is right there. This is 1i, this is 2i, this is 3i, this is 4i, this is 5i. 3 plus 0i, I'm going to go 3 in the real direction, and I'm going to go up 0i, which means I'm just right there. Negative 5 minus 2i, the a part, the real part, is negative 5, 5 to the left, right there. And then minus 2i, I'll go down 1i, 2i, 3i, I'll go down 2i, right here. 4 plus 2i, I'll go 4 in the real direction, and up 2i. And I'm right there. 